talk about some acronyms today. Uh, the generalization has become a great problem these days. And as the previous speaker said, we need better architectures to start improving our coding quality and uh, with that uh, improve maybe for speed, maybe power consumption. And um, I would like to tell you that there are other possibilities, uh, like using uh, the opportunities uh, given us uh, by the Intel CPU. We have XMM and uh, GPR, which are extended multimedia extensions and uh, general purpose registers. And the SSC is uh, the Intel's name for its use of single data and um, multiple, mm, sorry, <laughs> single instruction and multiple data. So you can uh, fit um, multiple uh, data operations in one instruction. And I'm going to prove to you that it's possible to use general purpose registers in uh, SIM programming and the other way around. Um, in short, there's going to be a little more introductory uh, talk than uh, examples in our general world. And then I'm going to speak about using XML registers uh, for general purpose computing and introduce an, another old trick with the FPU and then the other way around uh, simmed with GPRs. And then to the conclusion. Uh, first, the uh, computer world is uh, getting more general these days. Uh, this technology has become standardized and uh, more unified and people try to make uh, cross-compatible components uh, to standardize pretty much everything. Uh, why is the um, world getting to even higher programming languages? So we can all do programs quite easily, like the .NET and uh, C Sharp, which are really high languages. But assembly needs a kick in its generalization, and uh, it comes from the SIMD architecture. Uh, there have been some examples, not all are listed here. Uh, the general purpose computing on a, a GPU, you use graphical processing unit to calculate mathematics, not even related to 3D or even 2D. And uh, NVIDIA has got uh, CUDA technology and even produced Tesla servers with that and unified shaders. There were pixel vertex geometry before and now they're all unified with the last architecture. Uh, Actually, also responded with unified shaders. Now the question is, uh, is Intel making a counterexample? Because it's planning a um, multi-core CPU in the future, where each core has its own assignment. One is for floating point, one is integer. But uh, I think that uh, it's even more general, because it's only a one CPU, and you can use to do uh, many things with that, uh, starting from integer and uh, maybe even uh, assignments that you can't imagine today. And now the <laughs> great talk about XMM registers uh, and how to use them for general purpose computing. The registers are named from 0 to 7. There were 8 before, now with 64-bit architectures there are 16 of them. Uh, they're designed to do parallel operations with uh, floats there you could do four single or two double operations uh, with uh, one cycle. And you can also use integers by byte word, d word, and quad word with uh, 
the integers can be signed or unsigned. It's completely dependent on the, the programmer. And uh, even uh, double quad words are supported with some effort. It's not uh, strictly su supported uh, by the architecture. And of course, Boolean doesn't care about data types, but uh, Intel has made a small trick here. It uh, detects the data type, and uh, correct data type is always faster. Uh, we can also support scalar operation, which is very common to general purpose computing. You have some multiple operation, you do it with uh, only one data unit. Some operations. We have uh, a lot of logical operations, some shifts, and uh, we usually use them only on uh, XML registers, but uh, we can always use them on memory, and we don't even use general purpose registers for it. And here's also the point where we have uh, multiple AND operations, but they act as the same, just uh, we need to choose the right operation for the right data type. Uh, the less common knowledge is uh, the huge amount of uh, instructions you can use for general purpose and uh, starting from the move instructions you can shuffle your data from general purpose registers to multimedia registers and uh, this move D and move Q are for double word and quad word data. And also you have uh, move GQ, which uh, as takes memory as one operand, and you can move uh, 60 bytes of uh, memory to an XML register. And this is uh, pretty common to use a stack when you roll out of general purpose registers. But uh, what you should do is when you use no SIMD operation in your program, you can uh, not push registers, but move them to multimedia registers. And uh, when you need it, you can fetch it back really quickly. Uh, push operation needs memory, memory has latency, all sorts of problems, but uh, moving through taking your EAX register and moving to XMM0 or whatever, you have 16 of them on uh, current architecture, you can do it uh, really quickly and you have efficiently 32 registers and uh, even half of them are empty because uh, even the 64-bit general purpose register takes to space the uh, half amount of a multimeter register. But uh, what we do here is uh, we're using SSE in a way it wasn't meant to be used, but uh, through this we can use it more effectively. And here's one example, MOOC-Q, XMM0, RAX. Uh, it only fills the lower part of it, but uh, you can always shift it to higher part and move another value to its lower part, so you can effectively uh, double the amount of uh, data you can save in multimeter registers. Uh, of course, there come some problems. The length of the instructions, which is five bytes, and half a clock throughput, and the two clock latency. Uh, when we compare it to a regular move from REX register to any other 64 bit register, it's only three bytes and a third of a clock. Uh, these measurements are all done on our last uh, core two architectures. Uh, there is one question from also Ixley. Okay. Uh, if we start using XMM as general purpose regi registers, then what is the purpose of general purpose registers? <laughs> uh, 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 if also in parentheses, like uh, when to use them, when to use general purpose registers and when to use XML. Uh, the last point I made was if you need more memory, the XML registers are free in your program when you don't do any multimedia programming or you don't need to uh, pack data types. You can use it as a spare memory. 
very fast spare memory. Very fast spare memory. It's like uh, it's even better than L1 cache because L1 cache has at least three clocks of latency. And you can use it as a memory and you can do operations on it. Like when you push your value to memory, you can do only limited operations on it. But when you move your value, value to a um, MMX register or XMM register, you can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, like I mentioned, the logical operations uh, which are common to GPRs, and uh, there are also multiple and divide operations. I hope it <laughs> I answered his question. Well, yeah, another thing is that you can't do a direction with the most media registers. You have to do like yeah. the general purpose registers. Yeah. Uh, there is also the uh, push pop example where this is a situation where we will win. Uh, if we compare it to a regular move to another 64 bit register, we lose because it, the XMM latency is a bit more than uh, shuffling through registers, uh, the REX and others. Uh, but uh, moving back from the multimeter registers to a 64 bit register is uh, faster with only uh, one third of the clock of throughput. Um, some more examples. After you do your MOOQ, you have your general purpose register in a multimeter register, and you can do a shuffle operation. Uh, we have a byte swap operation with Intel architecture, which uh, swaps uh, the order of bytes uh, in your machine word. Is it uh, 32 bit, 64, or 16 bit, whatever? And uh, with uh, the shuffle operation, you can not only uh, change the order, but uh, you can put them in any order or broadcast one byte to any bytes, and you have uh, two times the memory the 64-bit uh, data type usually has. So there are a lot of advantages. But uh, the, like with the last example, a lot of memory usage you need to have a 60 byte memory region where you code the shuffle uh, algorithm, how to shuffle it, and you need 10 bytes for the instruction itself. But if you don't care about the memory, because memory is free today, <laughs> then it's nothing to worry about. Uh, only a little more clocks. Uh, this, there's 8 versus 6 clocks with the byte swap. But if you do a lot of these, then the uh, latencies will hide and you will get the efficiency about uh, six and a half clocks per byte swap. So it might be convenient to use uh, multimedia registers sometimes. And uh, there's a scenario brought up when you need to uh, byte swap and uh, copy the swap device. You need to uh, add some other shuffling on it and you need to preserve the value, then the XMM register is two times uh, longer and you can have the spare result for any later usage. You can shuffle it again and, uh, and fetch the other value you preserved. With byte swap you need to make a move to another register which uses another register and uh, you might run out of memory if you're unlucky. Uh, other examples are uh, data movement, arithmetic operations, and even comparison, which uh, is fully integrated in the SSA instruction set and uh, bit wizardry and logic. Um, I hope many of you remember the FPU was uh, used to move data some time ago. Uh, they used uh, successive load and store operations to move 8 bytes at once. With the 32-bit uh, architecture, you will take only 4 bytes at a time. And if you uh, start to unroll the loop, you run out of register pretty fast. You have only 8 of them, but you can use uh, 6, I think, at maximum. Uh, you have got uh, plenty of uh, floating point uh, registers, uh, they still remain 8 even on 64-bit architecture, but uh, there's another problem with 64-bit architecture. 
you don't need uh, these uploads and stores anymore uh, because 64-bit extensions have already the same amount of uh, bytes you can move and uh, you will lose the edge with your floating point uh, movement. And even better, you can take the SSC and move double the amount, it's 16 bytes then. And with uh, the 64 bit architecture, you have 16 of them, so <laughs> we have effectively moved to 256 bytes uh, in one pass of a uh, loop. Also, what were the, some potential problems with the floating point move? I think you had to make sure the FPU control flags were set correctly. So yeah. you can throw ex exceptions on uh, some... And the bits don't, won't change. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the errors. Uh, and I, if I recall correctly, changing the FPU control work was a relatively expensive. Rather slow, yeah. yeah. And another problem is that uh, when you load something in the floating point unit, uh, it's a uh, Hello architecture, so you uh, push it like on a stack yeah. and you can only get the last one, not the other order and uh, the shuffling them again takes time and it's a task slower. Uh, I made some tests. I hope you can see the results. Um, I started with a simple uh, move instruction that is a really a macro instruction from ESI and, uh, registered to EDI or depending on the code you're writing, maybe 64 bit. Yeah, should be on the other side. Uh, it took 640 clock uh, on a move instruction, but uh, it took uh, 2000 clocks on uh, a regular move uh, through EAX register. And, uh, this is uh, where I did some unrolling, uh, and uh, we can see that the best uh, way to go is uh, replicating the move instructions with uh, D word, and you can get the best uh, clocks out of a uh, uh, loop. Even unrolling the move instructions didn't help, and then I tried uh, move D with uh, the XMM and it was still slow. Uh, now with 64-bit uh, architecture you have 8 bytes at a time and it's a bit faster but uh, the bottleneck is somewhere else uh, because it should have gone to twice the speed. And the only thing I could do was uh, unwrap the move apps. This is uh, aligned uh, packed the movement and uh, with eight times uh, unrolling, I could get the best speed out of it. So the floating point is somewhere here, 562 clocks. Uh, I should mention that uh, data moved was the same all the time. I can't remember anymore, was it uh, two kilobytes or something? Uh, so these are comparable values. I didn't take account into account the latency, so there might be some errors in here. And as you can see, the, uh, too much uh, unrolling can hurt the performance. So two times unrolling is some 500 clocks and it uh, climbs to 700 here. Next, but, sorry. Uh, yes. Next question from M. Hajduk. I, I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, in which program may this measured number of clocks of these algorithms? He asks how you measure it. Um, I just uh, ran it uh, some 20 times and uh, took the average. Or oh, read timestamp counter? With timestamp time counter, yes. Okay. So, actually the two decimal places behind it uh, are actually relevant because the timestamp counter is uh, some Inaccuracy of 40 clock cycles or something. Also, we should do the timing on an AMD processor as well. I yeah. believe that Intel has some special uh, short circuit hardware for the yeah. improved repeat moves. Sorry, I should have mentioned it. It's uh, done on a core 2. Uh, the numbers are totally different than others, but uh, usually 
any Intel 64 bit will have the same results with uh, XMM registers. And what, uh, what's the crucial part of this slide is that uh, the best you can get is 285 clocks compared to the best with the mm, most common instruction sets. Uh, you can get almost twice as fast. It's quite even faster. Um, but again, it hurts the performance when I unroll too much. Uh, I'll give the algorithms to anyone who are interested later. Mattis, did you have a chance to check what happens if you exceed the number of moves compared with your cache? What happens um, when the cache um, capacity Okay, I didn't try that because the data set was only like a few kilobytes, but the L2 cache is uh, like two megabytes and a core two. So the problem there is that... Um, the next bottleneck is memory. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not sure you, you may have different bottlenecks going to the FPU from cache than you would going to the uh, MMX. Yeah, that may well be. But that's uh, only a preliminary, preliminary test, so it needs a bit more testing to be absolutely sure. But uh, I would just sound a note of caution that yeah. it would be, I think, useful in making the comparison between. You want to compare how the floating point and how the special registers work, rather than testing how. Intel's microarchitecture works. In other words, it works. You, you, you uh, want to have point, a yeah. data size sufficiently large to exceed the size mm -hmm. of your cache. Uh, it would be uh, better to do it on a larger data set, but uh, with this uh, small amount, like 2 kilobytes of data, um, I'm going to more like uh, general programming where you don't need. Uh, a megabyte of data to be transferred, uh, but to more like a few kilobytes, and which is the best way to go when you need only a few data transfer. So is it uh, better to take a floating point unit and move the data quickly, or is it better to take a multimedia extension? If we go higher, then there are absolutely different algorithms. Uh, not even those simple move apps, but we need to uh, tell the cache what we're doing. And this was a too simple test to uh, give the right results at uh, those high level of uh, data movements. Yeah, because if you're going to move a lot of things around, if you use the right through yeah. instructions that don't pollute the cache, that can be pretty important. Move NTPS and yeah. NTPI and others, yeah. Now the other way around, uh, same with GPRs, um, the generalization works both ways. There was a question before about this, uh, so when to use what. Uh, if you really want, you can use general purpose registers to make uh, packed uh, instructions. Uh, we have first here, a copy an important byte, uh, word or whatever, to the full register and multiply is the best uh, way to go then. You take a constant in a repetitive pattern like uh, 01, 01, 01 in hex and you have uh, mm, copied the first byte in your register to all the bytes in the register. Or you can do the same with the other constants where the pattern is longer and the one represents the start of uh, each data set. And with uh, 64 bits, you can easily uh, fill uh, 16 bytes of interesting data uh, with one multiply instruction. And multiply somewhere about three clocks plus some latency on a core two architecture. Mm, synth addition and subtraction is also possible, but uh, it's a bit tricky because you have to use double sized constants and uh, when you add a byte to another byte, you can only read a byte afterwards. 
and you have trash uh, in the higher byte and you need to interleave them so you have word alignment but you add bytes so there's a bit trashing so it's not very efficient but uh, I think there might be use somewhere where you don't have XMM and you definitely need some uh, multiple data to be squeezed through single instructions. Uh, even trickier are multiplies because multiplies are only possible uh, with one value. Um, there's an example with uh, we have a byte here uh, in the EAX and to multiply with this kind of pattern and we have interesting bytes uh, in here. We can do uh, other patterns and have uh, these kind of values here broadcasted everywhere. Uh, with uh, multiply you can only say that I want these values to be multiplied by 4 and uh, you have these values multiplied in the result but if you need to have different constants multiplied here it's uh, rather tricky or even impossible with the general purpose registers so uh, better get yourself an XMM then um, or try to find another way to do it but multiply is also possible The generalization between uh, the multimedia registers and general purpose registers is uh, possible, as we've seen, with some uh, tricks in involved. Uh, but with some thinking, it uh, might be even more efficient than the conventional methods of using general purpose registers. Uh, of course, it all depends on the application and on the programmer, but. Uh, in theory, it's possible, and I've put some examples together where it really works. And while the old world is moving, which, why should assembly stand still? Because uh, other world is generalizing, and uh, I couldn't see the same kind of behavior in assembly. We have too many instructions and not much to do with them. Thank you. If you have any more questions, I'd like to answer. Okay, uh, no questions, looks like no questions. We should uh, wait for a few seconds until the video catches on. Okay. For them, uh, but I think no questions. There is some discussion about it. Okay, I think we can move on.